Welcome back to Sleepless Run and Plays, and today we're going to do another one of the Tier Maker Ranking Lists. This one is on a request, so I'm going to be ranking the 45 clan mechs that are coming from the Catalyst Games Kickstarter, the Clan Invasion Kickstarter. So we're just going to deal with the clan mechs only today, and we're going to rank all 45 of them. I've created again five brand new ranking qualities, the top being best of the best, the next being worth a trial of possession, the middle, an average clanner, the fourth unit down is Salama unit, I hope I'm saying that right, Salama unit, I, the old the old garrisoned units essentially, and then of course the last rank is inner sphere quality, because if your clan mech is so bad that it looks like it's an inner sphere mech, that's where that belongs. So, we have our mechs down here in order, the order I've predetermined, and we're going to begin. The first mech up is the Timberwolf, starting out at the gate with a great mech. It's a 75 ton, 5'8 Omni mech with good armor and plenty of pod space. The Timberwolf has 15 configurations through the ages, and all of them are battlefield worthy. It tends to run hot in a lot of the configs, but most of the time it carries so much weaponry that it's able to manage its heat by cycling weapons and still be a significant threat on the battlefield. This mech belongs in the best of the best category for its absolute all-around usefulness and combat effectiveness. And the fact that it fights like a, an assault mech as a heavy, that that's good enough. This is a very solid mech all the way around. It's good to start with the best of the best. And then we're going to rapidly switch gears. The Executioner. I want to like this mech, but I can't. It's a 95 ton monster that moves 4, 6, 8 with mask. It has one stupid, awful, damnable design feature though that just makes it an all around awful mech. It has unforgivably low torso armor. The side torsos have the same amount of armor as, the, as internal structures, making them very fragile. The arms are better armored than even the torsos are. And even the center torso is under-armored, so your critical components, low armor. It only has 88% armor coverage overall, which compared to the Timberwolf, the Timberwolf has 99.56% coverage. Yeah, that's covered. The weapons loadout are almost completely mounted in the arms of the Executioner, and they're not spread, so they're not spread evenly over the mech. That's a design flaw of a lot of the Clan Invasion era mech, or uh, Omni mechs. This does give the Executioner good side, attack, uh, side arc attacks, but it leaves the mech easily crippled. Some variants, such as the A and D, are very lethal, but they lack the heat sinks to cope with the sheer volume of weapons fire. This mech is not terrible, but it's also not very good. This is the kind of mech you would assign to a Salama unit. It is just offense, and that's what it does. The Nova. I don't know how to say this, but the prime config of this mech is just too much of a good thing. It's carrying roughly twice as many weapons as it can use in one round of firing without significant heat problems. We're talking like a shutdown roll of 10 plus. This is not a good mech for heat management at all. The best that can be said is that if it loses one arm, it can still fight effectively because now you have the right number of weapons for the heat sinks it carries. Again, like the Executioner, all the weapons are in the arms of this mech. The A variant, in my opinion, is a lot better. Actually, a lot of the var and, and the worst part is a lot of the variants of this mech are relatively subpar. Overall, I find it to be a confusing design for its weight class. It moves like a heavy clanner, 5'8". It wants to hit like a heavy, but it can very, very rarely handle the amount of heat it generates when it does. Very few configurations put any weapons on the torso. And when they do, they are backup close range weapons. I want to like this mech, but it almost always feels like it's half the mech it should be. Again, sadly, I think this one belongs right here. The Grendel. A mech on the lighter end of the medium weight class, with good speed of 7117. The prime configuration's weapons are not a bad mix, if you bracket fire them and watch your use of jump jets. It's easy to hoop or heat if you alpha strike and jump a lot, but it's a flexible, Flexible little mech. 
It has weapons spread out over the entire mech, including torsos, head, arms. That's always good. It only sports a but it only sports a touch over 94% armor coverage. With its speed, that's kind of more than acceptable, though. Some of the other configurations are not quite as good as the Prime, but some are more than passable, and it has a good number to choose from. I think this mech is just above an average cleaner and probably just barely worthy of a trial of possession. The Adder. First light mech on the list. Traditionally either a sniper mech or a long-range missile boat. I like the missile configs more, as the sniper configs tend to significantly overheat, especially the Prime, which mounts two ER PPCs but only 11 double heat sinks. Fire once, and you're already suffering penalties to moving and shooting. It has a targeting computer which is nice, but still. Later era configurations start getting really weird on this thing. The S configuration mounts more machine guns than a Piranha, which we'll get to that one later on. It also has 96% armor coverage and a 6'9 speed profile, which means it's survivable in a fight. For a light mech, that is. Most variants can punch above its weight class, providing you manage the heat well. In all truth, I think the Adder is worthy of a trial of possession. The Dire Wolf. This massive 100 machine of Big Dev is a mech that lives up to its terrible inner sphere name. Like a lot of 110 mechs, it mounts 99% armor coverage. The Prime config mounts an insane amount of weaponry, again, like so many of the Invasion Era Omnis, that mostly in the arms. Each arm mounts a pair of ER large lasers, a pair of medium pulse lasers, and an Ultra AC-5. Then as an afterthought, an LRM-10 was slapped onto the left torso. Even turning off the medium pulses, the mech generates a dozen heat more than it can dissipate, when standing still. It is too much of a gun platform and little more. It's the slowest of the Invasion Era Omnis, most clan mechs easily outpace it, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of it. When I think of a clan mech, of what it should be, I think a good combination of speed, armor, and weaponry. This is only two-thirds of what I want out of my clan mech. Still, I can't wait it anywhere but worth the trial of possession. It's not average, and it's definitely not something you'd see anywhere below there, but it's just not fast enough in my opinion. Maybe if it had jump jets. But as it is, it's worth a trial of possession. The Summoner. A mobile heavy mech sporting jump jets giving it a 585 profile. But it only has about 84% armor coverage and 22.5 tons of pod space. A lot of early configs mount a singular ballistic weapon, a singular energy weapon, and then a missile launcher. I always think of this design as being a little bit weird, and I like that. But it has drawbacks, such as limited weapons, and the armor is a tad thin. But I think the summoner is right there in the middle as an average clanner. Stormcrow. The top weight medium of the Invasion Era Omnimex. Boasting over 98% armor coverage and a very good speed profile of 690, the Stormcrow is an excellent mech. While a lot of configs suffer from the Invasion Era overheating problem, this mech still shines. The 55 ton mechs are almost always magical in a way. Inner Sphere, Clan, it doesn't matter. They're magical. They tend to combine speed, armor, and weaponry better than almost any other specific weight value, and the Stormcrow is no different. With over 14 configurations to choose from, depending on your time frame, there's likely to be a Stormcrow that fits your playstyle. This mech is, hands down, one of the best of the best. The Shadowcat. A 45-ton medium with built-in mask and six jump jets, this little mech can move. 696 profile that can boost to a 12 for a run is pretty good. Only carrying around 88% armor, it can't take much of a punch. But it does its best work avoiding direct confrontation with its movement. This mech even has new configurations such as the D, I, and M, thanks to the recent Kickstarter. I actually think that every single mech in the Kickstarter is getting new variants. There are already 14 of the Recognition Guide Ill Clan out, and 10 more of them to come, and each one has contained a significant number of new mech designs based upon the ones we're getting in the Kickstarter. Okay, this little Nova Cat created monster makes both a great scout and a wonderful harasser, or an even better scout buster. I don't think this mech is the best of the best, but it's certainly a mech worthy of a trial of possession. The Mist Lynx. Weighing in at 25 tons, this light mech is actually worse at moving than the Shadow Cat. It has a 7.11.6 movement profile, which just seems weird. So it jumps the same as a Shadow Cat, but it runs slower when the cat's using mask. And even worse, 
this little mech is only running at 75% of armor maximum armor coverage. It's not a great delivery system for elementals, which, if you were wondering, is one of the reasons why a lot of the original Invasion-era Omnimechs seem so determined to not have torso-mounted weaponry. The Mist Lynx has a lot of configs, including, I think, seven new ones, and yet, I just don't like this mech very much. Slow for a clanner of its tonnage, and under-armored, the only thing going for it is the 7.5 tons of weapon pod space. It always mounts an active probe, so it's really just an upgun scout. And as for fixed critical slots, the whole mech only has two open slots in the torsos. So every single loadout lumps everything in the arms, arms that only have four points of armor. This is the first design that really feels like an old school, intentionally bad design. This is inner sphere quality. The Gargoyle. Ah, the Omni mech cousin of the infamous Charger. A mech that sports a 400 rated XL engine. Thankfully, it's an XL. Otherwise, this thing would be just like the Charger and undergunned. Giving it a 5.8 movement profile for an 80 ton assault mech, speed is the gargoyle specialty, which is good since it only has 85% armor coverage and tends to mount all of its weapons in its arms. I've never been a big fan of this mech. Some configs are passable, but others are just plain awful. Also, this is the confusing mech with two T configurations. One is from the new Recognition Guide Ill Clan, Volume 11. One's older. It is fitting that this mech's custom config is from a Salama unit, because this is really a mech that belongs in a Salama unit. Again, if I'm butchering that word, I'm very sorry. I couldn't find a pronunciation guide for that anywhere. Next up is the Hellbringer. Oh, I was not looking forward to ranking this mech. Let's start with the good. And now I'm done. This mech lacks endosteel, ferrofibrous, or armor. And there are plenty of open critical slots. Yes, it just plain lacks armor. It has less than 61% armor coverage. That's pathetic. The Prime config carries a crap load of, worth, of worthless equipment like four freaking A-pods. Which doesn't even make sense with clan mentality. Why would they have a dedicated variant of a mech with anti-infantry pods? I mean, they're not even anti-battle armor pods. They're just anti-infantry pods. It, 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 it makes no sense to me. It also carries a lot of electronics, an, elect an active probe, an ECM, a targeting computer, which is nice and all, but in addition to having next to no armor, this mech also sorely lacks in heat dissipation. It can generally fit generate 52 points of heat in the prime configuration, and carries a paltry 13 doubles. Yep, it can only dissipate half the heat it generates. This mech is almost worse than inner sphere quality, but I can't go below there. This mech is just plain awful. Mad Dog. This mech brings typical clan heavy speed of 5.8.0. It carries just over 81% armor coverage, which is a bit on the light side. Most configs work as a fire support mech that carries su supporting direct fire weaponry. It has a few truly awful configs, such as the E, which carries two HAG 30s and only four shots per gun. Ugh. An overall useful mech that is not exactly standout. This mech, to me, seems like another prime example of an average clanner. Personally, I love the mech, but I can't take it any higher than average. It's just... in the middle. The Ice Ferret. The Ice Ferret does one thing well, and that is run. A 45 tonner with an 812 movement profile. It's got speed. Sadly, very few of its configs take advantage of that speed. Most configs mount a single long-range weapon and several short-range backup weapons. That is aside from the D configuration. The D config gets it right. Four medium pulse lasers give the mech great accuracy combined with great speed, and has great armor coverage of just over 94%. One variant alone does not elevate this mech that high. If it was that config alone, I'd say this one of the best of the best, but that config is not the whole mech, which makes me sad. The other configs of this mech skirt the line between average and salama, and the D ensures this mech is at worst an average clanner. I wish it was so much more. The Viper. Here we have another speedy little mech with an 8128 profile. This ugly, ugly little mech, but it performs well. Most configs make use of its speed to bring close range weaponry to bear, often unable to handle the heat it generates, especially the jump of 8. It needs to have careful use of the jump capability to get in and out of combat while cooling down. This ugly little mech also boasts a considerable 97.8 armor coverage, which is really good. The biggest downside is a paltry 8.5 tons of pod space available. 
Still, the different configurations are generally pretty good. And this mech is definitely not best of the best, but it's kind of close. And it's certainly worthy of a trial of possession. Even if it is ugly. And with that done, we have now covered the first 15 mechs of the Clan Invasion Kickstarter. These are all the mechs that are currently available in Wave 1 if you've already bought them. And if you're looking forward to Wave 2 and an unboxing video that will eventually be coming, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, because I'll be doing a Wave 2 unboxing video as soon as it arrives on my doorstep. Let's continue now. The Warhawk. This is the third heaviest of the Invasion Era Omnimechs. This 85-ton sniper mech can move 4.6 and boasts 98.5% armor coverage. Every single config mounts size a sizable targeting computer and plenty of direct fire weaponry to take advantage of it. Created by Clan Smoke Jaguar, this mech design was lost to the Inner Sphere clans after the Jihad due to the annihilation of Clan Smoke Jag. This design trick it takes every single clan mech box. It has speed 4.6 for an assault. It has very good armor and very good weaponry, even if a lot of variants do run hot. With the bonus of a targeting computer for all that direct fire weaponry. Not the prettiest of mechs, often called a walking apartment complex, but it is one of the best of the best. It's just so good. The Nova Cat. There are some truly fantastic mechs, and we've already seen a few. The Timberwolf, the Warhawk, and then there is the Nova Cat. The Nova Cat is not as fast as the Timberwolf, moving at only 4.6 for, for most configs, because of some on some of them, like the A, mount jump jets, giving it a 4.64 profile. It has an XL engine, but neither ferrofibrous nor endosteel. Because if it did, it could not mount nearly as much equipment as it does. It needs the critical space because more than half, the, uh, half of this mech's tonnage is dedicated to pod space. Some configs, like the dare I say it, perfect A configuration, use every single critical slot in the mech, ripping out both the lower arm and hand actuators on both arms in order to maximize the used space. The Nova Cat is an amazing mech, and almost every single configuration is good, or better than good. The Nova Cat is, without a doubt, one of the best of the best, if not the best of the best. I think I may have said best too many times right there. The Cougar. It's a bit slow for a light mech with 580 and lacking in maximum armor it only amounts a touch over 88 percent. The Cougar makes its mark by dedicating nearly 55 percent of its weight to pod space and it works. This little light mech is a long-range sniper or long-range fire support mech a lot like the Adder. Uh, all the variants essentially, aside from the F, which is a strange little brawler, and all of the variants, aside again from the F, mount at least one weapon that reaches out to 21 hexes or more, and sometimes it mounts many of them. Gauss rifles, LRMs, ER large lasers, this little mech likes to play the long distance shooting game. To back up these long range weapons, most variants mount some form of close range weapon as well, making it a great star mate. This mech, much like the design the Jade Falcon based it on, is absolutely worth a trial of possession. The Kit Fox. A tiny little 30-ton sniper. This mech lacks speed for its size, clocking in only a 690 profile. It also lacks armor, sporting less than 73% coverage. That's really pretty light. But what it lacks in those departments, it makes up for in weaponry. Over half this mech is dedicated to pod space. Yes, a full 16 tons of its 30 are available pod space. This typically is devoted to mount one or two large direct fire weapons, such as auto cannons, gauss rifles, or ER PPCs. And the rest of the space is dedicated to smaller laser or missile weaponry in order to support the big bore gun. This generally means that it runs very heat efficient, generally. Among the clans themselves, this is not a very popular design, and yet it seems perfectly average to me for the clans, as the design favors offense more than defense. The Fire Moth the smallest clan Omni from the Invasion era. This tiny 20-ton speed demon clocks in at 10 15, 0, going up to 20 on the run thanks to its inbuilt mask. Using mask to dash every other turn, this mech can cross a battlefield in the blink of an eye, which is good because the speed demon has almost no armor. Only 55% armor coverage on this tiny little frame means that even a single inner sphere medium laser is a deadly threat to it. Oddly, 
Over 30% of this mech's weight is dedicated to weapons, and some configurations, like the H, are truly deadly to the monsters. Sporting nine heavy small lasers and a targeting computer, the H can fell larger opponents. It just can't stick around to watch them fall, lest it be caught with a low movement modifier and subsequently destroyed. This little mech is also the perfect delivery vehicle for points of elementals. Covering the battlefield with extreme speed, the Fire Moth can easily drop off the elementals behind enemy lines or right near enemy mechs. It's hard to place this little monster because it's such a mech of extremes, extremely fast and extremely fragile. This is why one of the few lower mechs that I would actually say, because of its specialization, is actually worthy of a trial of possession. The Night Gear Slow for a Clan Heavy at only 464, the Night Gear focuses instead on raw combat capability. With over 95% armor coverage and on a 75 ton frame, this mech can take a beating. It has 38 tons of pod space for weaponry. Most configs focus their firepower around a single large board direct fire weapon like an Ultra AC-10 or Gauss Rifle. Some mount multiples such as the primary config that mounts an Ultra-10 and two ERPPCs. That's a nice combo. When not firing its close range backup weapons, the night gear is very heat efficient typically. The only config that is really a letdown is the B, because despite having two Gauss rifles and plenty of ammo, it decided to waste 11 tons on a pair of LB2Xs and a single ton of ammo with sight. So with a single ton of ammo, you have to choose. Solid shot for 2 damage, or cluster to get that minus 1 and have a greater than 50% chance of only doing 1 point of damage. LB2s are garbage weapons. Ignoring that config, I'm just going to throw ignore that config in my mind because that config is not this mech. Despite this thing, and also despite this thing's slowish speed, but it has jumping. Jumping is good, though. The Night Gear, because of its raw overall combat performance, is one of the best of the best. The Linebacker. Speed is a key trait in the Linebacker Omni Mech. This 65 ton low slung mech mounts the largest XL engine possible, giving it movement profile of 690. It is also mounts almost 91% armor coverage, meaning it can take some hits and as well as dodge some hits. This does mean it's a touch light on the pod space, with only 17.5 tons, or just over 26%. Some configs like the D are very good brawlers, but others are oddly long range, like the Prime and the A. And config C mounts three rear facing weapons. Why rear weapons again? Why? This thing is fast enough you don't need rear weaponry. The speed is amazing, the armor is good, but this mech fails to deliver an offensively high all output, typically. I mean, in some cases, the weapon loadout is equivalent to the Adder. That's a mech that weighs 35 tons less. And none of the configs, though, on this thing are particularly bad, but a lot of them are sort of lacking, which is sad, for this is a supposed to be a replacement for the Timberwolf, and it will never be a replacement for the Timberwolf. Which means that this is really just an average clanner. It's almost so very close to being worth a trial of possession, the speed alone is not enough in a heavy mech. It's just an average clanner. Next up, the Black Lantern. Very, very fast for 55 ton mech. Again, that's that magical 55 ton mech area. 711 with mask getting up to a 14. No jump jets. But so so armor with only with a little bit less than 83% coverage and very low pod space. It only has 13 tons. This means it tends to be a little light in the gunnery department, despite mounting clan weapons. It makes for a very good heavy scout or a harasser, since it can easily keep pace with most clan lights and outpace a significant number of IS lights. With so little uh, pod space, few configs mount many extra double heat sinks, so it can run a hot in a lot of configs. But because it's so well tailored to its role, this mech is certainly worthy of a trial of possession. The Battle Cobra. This is a strange Omni mech. It has no XL engine, and yet it moves 690. An XL could save it 5.5 tons. Thankfully it does have ferrofibrous and endo steel. So it has, still has 14 tons of pod space and 90% armor coverage. It only mounts 10 double heat sinks, and aside on all the configurations aside from the H and the X configs, both of those configs mount heavy lasers, so it needs more. This means that even the H and the X, though, do tend to run hot because even with extra heat sinks, it's still heavy lasers, and those are just hot running. All the configs mount a plethora of direct energy weapons, and even when it carries a ballistic or missile weapon, th this tends to be a very average clan mech. It's just a weird little mech. It goes right in the middle. The Arctic Cheetah. Developed by Clan Smoke Jag to replace the craptastic Mist Lynx, this mech does copy one of the oddities of the Mist Lynx, an uneven movement profile. 
This 30 ton machine moves at 8, 12, 6. Okay? That's just weird. It really needs one or two more jump jets. I mean, one would give it a better movement profile, uh, better, better movement modifier when you jump the full distance, and two more would make it a normal 8, 12, 8, like a spider or whatever. The benefit of the Miss Lynx, though, is at least this is faster, and its armor is about the same as the Miss Lynx, coming in at a, well, coming in at a paltry 72%. This does mean it's slightly more armor than the Lynx, because this this weighs a little bit more, but it's not by a lot. Nearly a third of its weight is dedicated to pod space, and bizarrely, while it's not a fixed piece of equipment, every single configuration mounts a flamer. Somewhere. It's not a brilliant design by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not as bad as the Miss Lynx. This is either an average cleaner or a mech belonging to a Salama unit. And I'm feeling generous, so I'm going to put it on the very bottom of the averages. The Turkina. Jade Falcon's totem-style Omnimech is a 95-ton 353 mech that fills the same role as the Dire Wolf. Big guns, limited mobility, but improved because of jumping. And nearly max armor, with over 98% coverage. But dang is it ugly. Almost every config is a fantastic murder machine, though. Most have a little bit of a heat issue, but not much of one. Nowhere near as bad as the Dire Wolf can get. This mech is really one of the best of the best, even if it does look like an ugly pancake. The ability to jump is just so good on an assault mech. The Kingfisher. This is an old 90-ton assault mech, and it moves at an impressive 4.6.0 without an XL engine. Thankfully, it has both Industrial and Ferro fibers to lighten the load, because as it is, it only has 24 tons of pod space. But that works for this mech, because its older Omni mech, it predates the likes of the Warhawk and the Dire Wolf in the fluff, is more defensive than a lot of modern Omni mechs. No Axle engine and over 99% armor coverage means this machine can continue to fight longer than most. And with most of the configurations mounting a sizable gun, like an ER PPC or an ER large laser, in the center torso, this thing just keeps fighting. Despite its age, new configs keep coming out, such as the E, which mounts ATM launchers, and the H, which carries multiple heavy lasers and a targeting computer. While this mech is not the best of the best, due primarily to having only a quarter of its weight in weaponry, it is absolutely worthy of a trial of possession. The crossbow is another strange Omni mech without an XL engine. But even worse, it has neither ferrofibrous nor endosteel. Less than a quarter of this mech's weight is set aside for pod space. This mech is outgunned by some clan lights. And it weighs 65 tons. The only thing going for it is the fact that it mounts more than 90% armor coverage. That's it. This is an old, outdated Omni mech that is unworthy of even a Sol Amo unit. This is inner sphere quality. Eben Jag. There are very few Omni mechs in which... One single config is the absolute king of the mech, but in the Ebon Jag, it is, there is one. The D config alone is what makes this mech, and why it should be judged on. But not I can't just judge it on solely the D, because that config reigns lethal death on all who oppose it. Sadly, like I've already said the D alone does not make a mech. And I just realized what I said. Okay, this 65 ton heavy mech moves at a clan average of 5'8", and carries over 86% armor. So, just a, it's a little bit light, but not too, too light on the armor. These are both roughly average clan stats right in the middle, more or less. But where the Ebon Jag really excels is its lethality at range. Most configs are long-range snipers equipped with Ultra AC-10s, Gauss rifles, ER large lasers, and on the X variant, a clan rotary AC-5. Oh yeah. Very few variants are brawlers, but there are a few with Ultra 20s and the like. This mech boasts 30 tons of pod space, which is almost half its total weight. You know what? This mech is one of the best of the best. It's not as good as some of the other best of the best, but it's up there. It's certainly no Nova Cat, but <laughs> nothing's a Nova Cat, except for the Nova Cat. The Huntsman. A 50 ton machine that moves like a 55 ton IS machine. 585. Seems a little bit slow for a clanner. But uniquely, this mech mounts a full 100% armor. Lots of configs of this mech are very unique. One mounts a retractable blade, another mounts a radial, uh, a radical heat sink system, 
and all the loadouts are strange and unique, combining both long and short range weapons. Sometimes it uses bad weapons like Ultra AC2s or LB2s, but on other configs it carries Streak LRM launchers and improved heavy large lasers. Some variants I don't even know as they are in the new recognition guides and I actually haven't seen them yet. I rather like this mech because it's because it is so non-standard for the clans. So long as the variants of the AC2 are avoided, most loadouts are actually pretty good. It's a touch slow for a claner, but it has great armor, and mostly acceptable weaponry, some very unique loadouts. I think overall this mech evens out to be a very, very average, and therefore, it's going to be an average clan mech, even though it kind of tends a bit towards the extremes, they, they, they average out. The Stone Rhino, aka the Behemoth, most people know it by the Behemoth, but I like to use the clan names for everything. I love a mech whose lore ends with the phrase, Apparently, the historians were wrong. <laughs> I also love a mech whose original Victor Musical Industries artwork from the 1992 book fails to match the loadout in any way possible. All the subsequent mental gymnastics that people went through trying to explain why that mech looked like that, but had that weapon, that set of weaponry, was hilarious. But that is a tangent. This 100 ton monstrosity lacks a lot of signature clan systems, such as an XL engine, Industrial, or Feral Fibrous. It also only moves at 535, so it does mount jump jets, that, that's good. It's nearly heat efficient, only taking up a few points on the, a turn, thanks to the twin Gauss rifles generating so little heat, and it has almost 94% armor coverage. This should probably be a Sol, uh, Solama unit's mech, but because of how iconic it is, as it was on a the cover art for the original 3055 uh, technical readout, and having twin Gauss rifles, I'm gonna bump it just up into the average clanners. The Supernova. It's a 90 ton sniper mech. Reaching out to touch someone at up to 25 hexes away is pretty darn good. If only it had had enough heat sinks. It carries 26 double heat sinks. But those cannot hope to deal with the insane heat generated by firing six ER large lasers. With a sniper level acceptable 83% armor coverage, this mech can stay in the fight provided that the pilot watch the heat scale. All in all, it's a good mech, but the fact that its main flaw is heat problems due to its primary guns keeps it just from just away from true greatness. Just a hairs away, making it an average claner and not better. It's so close to being better, but it just doesn't make it. The Warhammer 2C. Weighing 10 tons more than, the, uh, than its IS counterpart, the Warhammer 2Z takes everything from the Inner Sphere base model and ups it. Aside from the movement profile, which stays at a competent 4.6. PPCs become ER PPCs. Medium pulse lasers replace medium and small lasers. The SRM-6 system stays the same. The machine guns are lost. The armor is up from something in the 70% range to over 93% coverage, and it's pretty heat efficient. By switching off a single ER PPC, the Warhammer 2C can fire all of the rest of its weapons and walk without generating a single excess point of heat. In clan terms, that means this is a cool running mech. And that right there alone, for almost that uniqueness, makes it absolutely worth a trial of possession. The Marauder 2C. Located in weight between the original Marauder and the Marauder 2, this 85 ton Marauder carries an insane amount of weapons, but not nearly enough heat sinks to take full advantage of even its three primary ER PPCs without overheating. Not even looking at the other six guns, which are immediately mostly close range defense weapons. Now, a good pilot will fire 3, 2, 3, 2, and keep alternating back and forth on the ER PPCs in order to maintain proper heat control. So it's not a huge issue. And the 2C is fast enough for an assault mech of 4.6.0. And with only... But it only has 83% armor coverage. Again, that's a very average armor coverage for the clans. And since this mech in the fluff is ubiquitous and found on like every single clan garrisoned world, this mech is truly the perfect average claner. The Hunchback 2C. This has got to be the worst mech ever designed by Clan Smoke Jag. To quote the TRO, with absolutely no effort put towards survivability, all the resources went to allowing the pilot to die with a semblance of dignity by killing at least one opposing machine before falling in battle. It has 10 shots of ammo to feed two 
Ultra AC-20s. It has less than 57% armor coverage. And it is slow at a 464 with an XL engine. This seems like a bad industry idea. Not even a good industry idea, but a bad industry idea. Maximizing exactly one aspect of a mech. In this case, raw, short, brief offensive power at the expense of everything else. And I do hate badmouthing anything smoke jag, but this mech is not even worth being given to a Soama unit. This mech is industry quality and barely that. The Vapor Eagle. A 55-ton second-line mech with a solid 696 movement profile and nearly 93% armor coverage. XL engined, endosteel, and ferrofibrous. It has all the weight-saving devices, and it carries highly accurate weapons, large pulse laser and three medium lasers combined with two straight two racks, of course, and rounding that out with three machine guns. It has 11 double heat sinks, so it's almost heat efficient. And of course, there are several other versions available. This is a solid little mech. Not little, solid 55 ton mech. Again, that golden number, 55. It's pretty darn good. It's not quite best of the best, but you know what? It's worth of a trial of possession. The Conjurer. This mech looks a lot like a... 2C, wink wink. <clears throat> Lighter by 5 tons and faster moving than its, inner, than its unnameable inner sphere counterpart, moving in at a 696. Like a lot of second line machines from the TRO 3055, this mech lacks an XL engine. It does, however, have both endosteel and ferrofibrous armor, and that armor gives it better than 96% coverage. The weaponry is good, but not stellar, mounting a large pulse laser, 2 ER mediums, and 2 streak 2 launchers. And it mounts 10 doubles to deal with most of the heat. Total heat is always a touch unpredictable when a mech mounts multiple streak launchers, so as long as it's not jumping, it's almost heat efficient. Despite the appearance of the mental reference to the clan that shall not be named, this mech is absolutely worth a trial of possession. The Horned Owl I love the look of this 35-ton little mech. Sadly, looks are a bit wasted on this machine. Again, lacking an XL engine. This mech only moves at 696, slow for a clan, light, a clan light mech. It also mounts just a touch over 80% armor, so it's neither super fast nor all that durable, which means that the weapons need to be good. The Horn Howl mounts a large pulse laser on the center torso and two medium pulse lasers, one in each arm. So not a ton of weapons, but very accurate weapons. And provided the mech runs and does not jump, it's perfectly heat efficient. The center torso large pulse laser really makes this mech better than it seems, so while it looks like a Salama unit mech, it's actually more of an average clanner. The Incubus. This is one of those fun mechs where the original TRO's loadout was totally wrong. It listed the speed as 9130. Yeah, you can't get that number. It's really a 914. And it listed the engine tonnage, tonnage at 7.25 tons, which is wrong. So it had an extra machine gun in the head. This has obviously been corrected, and it still performs well. Nearly heat efficient, only generating movement heat with 100% armor coverage, this mech is a fantastic light mech. It has some excellent new versions from the Recognition Guide Ill Clan, and despite being a second line mech, this mech is actually one of the best of the best. Even if the original TRO was completely bonkers. The Piranha. One of the smallest totem mechs, the Piranha is Clan Diamond Shark's tiny little attacker mech. Equipped with 12 machine guns and 2 ER medium lasers and an ER small, this thing is anti-infantry terror. Confusingly, it only mounts single heat sinks. What? Which means it cannot fire all three of its lasers without generating heat. It's also fast, 914, which is good, and 92% armor coverage, which is also good. According to the fluff, this mech is assigned to garrison and Salamo units, which because of some strange design ideas, such as the overabundance of machine guns and the lack of any double heat sinks, is right where it belongs. This mech is the perfect Sol Amma mech. It's just not good enough to be an average clanner, especially without the double heat sinks. That's like baseline for an average clan mech. The Kodiak. When it comes to totem mechs, there are a few that ever live up to the sheer presence and terror the Kodiak brings to the battlefield. This 100 ton monster has a max rated XL engine allowing it to move 460. Combined with the biggest bore ultra autocannon and two fistfuls of ER medium lasers, it's a mech to be feared. Now, it does have a heat issue, especially in alpha striking, but that can be overcome by smart weapons fire. 
The Ultra AC-20 also only has 10 shots, making it a weapon that you only fire when you're absolutely sure that you can hit. With a smidge over 91% armor coverage, this mech is not best of the best, but it's so close. The Kodiak is certainly worthy of a trial of possession. The Fire Falcon, developed by Jade Falcon to supersede the Mist Lynx. See a little bit of a theme here? Seems like the clans also know the Mist Lynx is a pile of garbage. <clears throat> this mech is faster than the Mist Lynx with an 812-0 movement profile, but of course, that means it's lacking any jump capability. This mech is more heavily armored, with 10% more coverage than the Mist Lynx, meaning more than 85% coverage. It also dedicates 40% of its weight to pod space, meaning it can be a lethal little mech. Several configs have heat problems, but not all of them. And with that much pod space available, there's usually a loadout for whatever task it needs to take on. Sniper, harasser, scout mech. It's a good little mech. Certainly worthy of a trial of possession. The Howler. This light fire support mech is actually not a totem mech. You would have thought that the Howler, aka the Baboon, would have been a fire mandrel totem mech. No. This thing was designed by Clan Jade Falcon, and in the old technical readout, they even said that only Jade Falcon fielded it. This, of course, changed in the fluff of the 3055U technical readout. This is a 20 ton, fast dish 711. Long range support mech, carrying 3 LRM 5 racks and 3 tons of ammo, this thing can fling plinky damage downfield all day long. It's okay. But it truly shines in the Howler 2, which carries 4 ATM 3s and 2 tons of ammo. Now it can carry normal rounds, essentially four SRM-3s, but it can also carry those high explosive rounds, which make it a real threat. Now sadly, the Howler 2 gets slowed down to a 690, but it gains mask, so it's a wash? Carrying less than 83% of armor coverage, it's a strange little mech, and some of the new variants are even weirder. The Howler 6 mounts two SRM-6s in a shoulder-mounted turret. The Howler 5 carries six ER medium lasers, but no extra heat sinks. Lethal, but hot running. Overall, the strange little mech isn't great at any one thing. It's not particularly fast for a 20 ton design, and not particularly deadly. And it's not particularly armored. It is the perfect mech, in my opinion, for a Solama unit. The Pack Hunter. It's like the clan version of the Hollander. One big effing gun. This little 30-ton machine can move and shoot. It carries an ERPPC and it moves 7 However, it does not have an XL engine, so it had to sacrifice something, and that something was armor. This little one-trick mech has less than 61% armor coverage, meaning that when it does eventually get hit, it's gonna hurt. It's an all-offensive mech, a gun on legs, the perfect thing for a Forlorn Hope or a Salama unit designed to go in, be all-offensive, get killed, and go out in a blaze of glory. The Hellion. I think it's fitting that we end on this mech, as it's the only mech from 3067 in the whole Kickstarter. This little 30 ton mech mounts all the weight saving tech, XL engine, Indo steel, ferro fibrous, and it works. 11.5 tons are set aside for pod space, and every config mount ma mounts mask, allowing the Hellion to move 711 up to 14, and the configs make good use of that 11.5 tons of armor. The Prime mounts a quartet of ER mediums, an LRM-10, and three SRM-2 streaks. Yeah, it runs a hot since it only mounts 10 doubles, but good piloting can mitigate that. The most important part is to be careful with the streaks. If they lock when you're not expecting them to, the mech can build up some extra heat. The Config B is surprisingly lethal with four heavy medium lasers, and a heavy large laser. Even with extra double heat sinks, the Config can't handle all that much heat. The Hellion also mounts 100% armor coverage which in a light mech is always good as every bit of protection is needed. For a combat light, there are not many that are better, and it even has a few fig configurations that make excellent scouts. This light, fast, armored, and deadly mech is certainly one of the best of the best, and a great place to end on. And there we have it, 45 clan mechs from the Clan Invasion Kickstarter. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, and look forward to that upcoming unboxing video for, clan, for the Clan Invasion Kickstarter Wave 2, because all the minis are on the ocean now. Everything is coming in, so in two to three months, we're going to have our Wave 2 stuff in our hands at long last. And won't that feel good? Again, if you enjoyed this video, please click like, click like subscribe to my channel, and we'll catch you in the future. This is Sleepless Runner saying, 
Sayonara. 